Friends, welcome to worship with Oakdale Park Church. Today is Good Friday, the day when we remember the sacrifice that Christ made by surrendering his life to die on the cross. In this evening service, we will hear three songs that will ask us to consider that sacrifice and repent for our role in putting Christ there. After the songs, we will hear from God's word with a brief meditation from Pastor Shannon. The service will end abruptly after the meditation. We invite you to notice the drum that begins beating as Pastor Shannon speaks to us. It represents the heartbeat of God and Jesus Christ. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for us. Let us pray together. God, we confess to you that we have betrayed and denied you. We have forgotten you and doubted your power. In times like these, when our faith is tested, we wonder where you are. In times like these, when we see injustice in the world around us, we often stand by. In times like these, when those who are vulnerable need us most, we turn inward, ignoring the cries of others to take care of ourselves. We confess, God, that again and again we have denied you. We have tried to shut, out, shut you out of our lives. We have betrayed you with our silence. Forgive us, O oh God, and help us to truly repent of those things we have put ahead of you. Help us to remember your sacrifice, your love, and your forgiveness. And empower us to share with others the meaning of your sacrifice, the power of your love, and the forgiveness you so readily offer to those who commit to following you. We pray these things in the name of our only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. People are sometimes confused about why the four Gospels offer such varying depictions of Jesus' crucifixion. The audience to which John Mark wrote his book was in Rome. The triumph was the ceremony by which an emperor was crowned king in Rome. Mark's audience would have been very familiar with this ceremony and its meaning. The account of Jesus' crucifixion in the book of Mark was designed to demonstrate to its hearers that through his crucifixion, Jesus was ascending the throne as king. The Praetorium in Rome was the seat of the general of the Imperial Guard. It was this military force that made and unmade Roman emperors. In a Roman coronation ceremony, the general would start by calling for the whole cohort of the Imperial Guard, at least 200 men together at the Praetorium. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the Praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. The Roman triumphator would be clothed in purple, a crown of laurel would be placed on his head, and a staff placed in his right hand. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. Before beginning the triumphal procession, the Roman conqueror would stand before his soldiers to receive their adoration and praise. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! The Roman triumphator, though dressed up as a god, would be accompanied in by people tasked with mocking, ridiculing, and insulting him in his ears to remind him that he is but a man. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The triumphal procession 
included the sacrificial animal being led by its executioners, carrying the double-bladed axe, the instrument of their execution. The executioners were men taken from the countryside. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from, in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. Once, during the laying of a foundation for a temple on a Roman hill, a human head was discovered with its features intact. Soothsayers declared, Romans, tell your fellow citizens that the place in which you found the head shall be called the head of all Italy. And since that time, the place is called Capitoline Hill. Capita means head in Latin. The Capitolium was the final stop of every Roman triumph. The procession wound its way through the streets to the forum and culminated in the ascent of the triumphator to the place of sacrifice, the place named for death's head. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Expensive wine is offered to the triumphator at the moment of the sacrifice, but he does not take it. Instead, he pours it out on the bull, which will give its life. The bull represented the god dying, the emperor, the god living. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. A Roman triumphal ceremony occupied an entire day and necessitated that final preparations would occur in the wee hours of the morning, as the procession would begin at dawn. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. It was common for the victim of Roman justice to wear a sign around his neck, announcing his crime to passers-by. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. The triumphator was carried in a chair to the temple for the culminating sacrifice. Once there, two consuls, who presided with him over the affairs of state, were seated on either side of him. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, and put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. <laughs>